Hello, good day. There's a tendency to look at any change that we see in a population of organisms and to think about it as an adaptation. But in fact, the change we see may not even be adapted. So that's one thing to, to be aware of, and I think we can see a good example of this in the study that I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's take a look at what we see and try to figure out if it's an adaptation or not. Okay, well, the data I'm talking about are based off of a data set that was collected uh, from a red-billed gull colony for 46 years in which individuals were numbered with metal bands and they collected a, a lot of data from them. And for some of them, they collected body weight. So that's what we're going to talk uh, about here. Over the period of the study from 1958 to 2004, there was a trend for all of the animals to become a little bit lighter, so to lose a bit of their, their body weight. You can see there's a definite trend here with males losing a little bit. It's only about 10 grams, but it's definitely a, a trend that you can see. And the same with females. On average, they're losing about a 10 grams or so. Now, during this same interval, the annual temperature was increasing. So this is a kind of a strange graph here. Everything is related to the zero point here, and the zero point is whatever the average was between 1981 and 2010. I don't know why they exactly decided to show it this way, but, but that's, what, that's what we've got. So the blue lines here represent years that were cooler than that zero baseline and then the red bars represent years that were warmer than the average of baseline. So uh, as you can see from a hundred years ago till now there's a pretty clear trend there and there is a, the trends uh, fairly clear for during the period of the study from 1958 to 2004. You can see you know there are fewer blue bars and more red bars and the red bars are getting uh, taller here. So there's definitely a, a warming trend during this time. If we look at the relationship between body weight and temperature, we can see that there is a, a slight uh, relationship there. It's not quite as clear as it was in the uh, graph of, you know, the year that they hatched out versus body weight, but it's still fairly clear. And again, between, between lower temperatures and higher temperatures, it looks like the birds are losing about 10 grams. So, it's pretty clear that there's been a drop in body weight, uh, a trend for there to be lower body weights in the red-billed gulls at the same time that the climate has been warming in New Zealand. So, we have to ask the question, is the drop in body weight an adaptation to the increased temperature? And it could be. It could be based on Bergman's rule. Bergman's rule is a rule that uh, relates temperature uh, with body weight. And let's uh, talk about Bergman's rule. Okay, well, the first thing about Bergman's rule you need to know is that it only is relevant when you are looking at very closely related animals. So you might be looking at, you know, several species within a given genus, or you might be looking at different populations of the same species, and, and that happens to be the, the case here. But Bergman's rule correlates body size and latitude. And what Bergman found is that animals that live at higher latitudes tend to be bigger than their comrades who live at lower latitudes. So anyway, in the North America, animals who live in, in the South would tend to be smaller than the same species uh, living up in the north. Bergman's rule was first uh, described by Carl Bergman. He described it in 1847 in a German language uh, journal publication. The translation of his title here is something to the effect of as to the conditions of the heat economy of the beasts of their size. And we'll get, uh, we'll see what that means in just a minute. Uh, so anyway, Bergman's rule 
again relates the body weight and the size of an animal to the latitude and there shows a definite pattern there well what is the underlying reason for this observed pattern so Bergman's rule states that there's a correlation between higher latitudes and larger body sizes well what else happens at higher latitudes well one thing that happens at higher latitudes is that it's colder generally most of the explanations of Bergman's rule talk about conserving body heat and it works out that if you live in the cold north country it's better to have a large body because with a large body you have more cells and with more cells you can generate more heat through oxidative metabolism there's another aspect of this as well that relates surface area to volume it's your surface where you lose the heat and it's actually the internal you know the internal volume is where you're generating heat uh, and it just happens to be a law of physics or for that matter a law of mathematics that larger objects have less surface area per unit volume it's just the way things scale so uh, that's the usual explanation for Bergman's rule and what they're saying here in this study is that possibly the birds getting smaller in New Zealand is a result of things heating up so animals that evolved to be a particular size under the old cooler climate they no longer need to put on that extra size and maybe they're better off without it and so that's the the rationale of the study is that it goes along with Bergman's rule that birds would lose weight as the climate heats up but is this a genuine adaptation well let's take a look at that well the decline in body size could be adaptation and if it is adaptation it could be adaptation through genetic evolution in which the frequency of alleles in the population are changing or it could be adaptation through phenotypic plasticity that's where individuals change their characteristics or behavior uh, on the other hand it could be that this decline in body size is not adaptive that it has nothing to do uh, with adaptation it may for instance simply be to environmental stress well if it is due to genetic evolution then you should see a corresponding pattern in the breeding records and they do have breeding records for all of these animals well the results from breeding records showed no evidence for natural selection for body size they used a statistical breeding model that's a little complicated and hard to understand uh, but they saw no evidence there furthermore they didn't see any evidence using more straightforward measures such as survival or the number of chicks hatched or the number of chicks that survived long enough to learn to fly this seems to rule out genetic evolution although they stopped short of saying it's completely ruled out because maybe they just don't know what to look for and there were a few little glitches in the in the data that, that could have possibly uh, you know led them to make a mistake but for for the most part they they feel that genetic evolution is all but ruled out so that leaves phenotypic plasticity and it also leaves open the possibility that this is simply a non-adaptive change whatever is going on may not necessarily even be an adaptation at all and in defense of that position they, uh, they observe that overall lifespan of these birds is decreasing and the size of the colony is shrinking it's shrunk by something like a, a third over the over the past 20 years so in conclusion there's no evidence in the breeding records for selection by body size if it's an adaptation then the decrease in body size must be some type of phenotypic plasticity then again maybe it isn't even adaptive it could just simply be due to stress or lack of diet or something like that uh, this paper was published by Toplitsky in 2008 and the title was Bergman's rule and climate change that's it thanks for watching